The Deaconess Foundation Hospital Spire is located only a few hundred meters from the famous Spire Cathedral. Spire is a small, old town in the Rhein-Neckar metropolitan region. We from the UMCH team are here today to introduce this partner hospital of ours. The facility disposes of 432 beds and 32 day clinic places in about 10 departments and sections. Since we have recently received many of our questions concerning everyday life in our partner hospitals, we decided to introduce you to the Deaconess Foundation Hospital here in Spire in this video. I am about to meet Dr. Tenshura. He is the medical director of the hospital and chief physician of the clinic for general and visceral surgery. Dr. Jenshura, the Deaconess Foundation Hospital here in Spire, can already look back on a very long tradition. In 1859, the Deaconesses were found here in Spire. In 1907, the first hospital was opened here. And in the meantime, a good 15,000 employees work here every day to ensure the health of the people in the region. I have read that 8,500 operations are performed here every year and that 2,800 babies are born here during this period. These are quite remarkable figures. Yeah, this is a große Menge. We have 25,000 ambulances. Yes, that's quite a lot. We care for about 25,000 outpatients and 25,000 inpatients. We have a midwifery school, a nursing school, and a physiotherapy school. And, as you know, we are a teaching hospital of the Mannheim Medical Faculty of the University of Heidelberg and the University of Medicine, Pharmacy, Science and Technology of Targu Mures. It is, of course, a challenge to combine this high number of patients with teaching. But it works very well. And that's because we are able to integrate the students into the everyday life at the hospital. Here, the students learn directly while working. This means that they are integrated into a real clinical process and learn what is important to us. Namely, the combination of high-tech medicine and human proximity. You just said it. The hospital here in Spire operates as an academic teaching hospital. What motivates you to train students in practice? There are various reasons for this, which are not entirely altruistic. We need good junior staff. And, as you can read in the press, they are in short supply. On the one hand, therefore, we must make our own contribution to securing good colleagues for the future. On the other hand, we have discovered that all those who are involved in the teaching are also significantly deepening their own knowledge. In other words, imparting knowledge and skills also brings the teachers a great deal further. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what makes teaching at your hospital special? On the one hand, the practical orientation and the small group size. Here in Speyer, we put great emphasis on cooperation and, of course, the logbook system offered by the universities. This way, it never happens, for example, that any teaching content is simply forgotten. In my opinion, it is extremely important that the respective students are really taught everything they need to learn. In addition, we give and receive a lot of feedback to and from the universities in order to monitor learning success. And, of course, there are exams. Ultimately, we get a benchmarking and know what the students learn in our hospital and the universities. I also want to learn as much as possible today. Thank you, Dr. Jinchura. And now we continue with the Clinic for Perioperative Medicine. Professor Hofstetter, would you please explain your department to our future students? The five pillars of anesthesiology are anesthetic procedures, intensive care medicine, emergency medicine, pain therapy, and palliative care. Which specific function do you and your employees have in this department? 
We provide anesthesia and intensive care, but also pain therapy, emergency and palliative care for the entire hospital. On the one hand, regarding surgical medicine, which is classically associated with anesthesia, but also more and more regarding internal medicine with increasingly complex interventions, for example, in cardiology. In addition, we also provide intensive and acute medical care for the hospital. In the event of emergencies, for example, we have an emergency team on site 24 hours a day. That's what my department's staff do. Is this emergency team often on duty? The team is on duty each day, but the frequency is quite different. It can be once, but also five to six times a day. In addition, we have emergency ambulances here in Speyer that are operated by employees of my department. This is also organized by my department, or in this case, by myself. Here at the clinic, we have about 10 calls a day as far as this is concerned. My staff are thus also available for emergencies outside the clinic. The word anesthesia literally means insensitivity and stands for sufficient pain therapy. Please tell us a little more on this topic. Pain therapy is extremely important in modern hospitals. Some people consult us because they have acute pain, for example, after an operation or for other reasons. We maintain a 24-hour acute pain service in which our employees take care of exactly these patients with different acute and quickly effective methods. In addition, we also have an outpatient clinic and a day clinic that are responsible for caring for chronically ill people who suffer from pain. We also have an outpatient clinic for naturopathic and complementary medical procedures. In this regard, it can be said that traditional Chinese medicine is a focal point. This is certainly one of our unique selling points. From pain medicine, one can also build a bridge to a part of the clinic that is not commonplace, namely palliative medicine. This department has a long tradition here in the clinic and was already founded and maintained by my predecessor. We have our own ward with seven beds. In this ward, we take care of terminally ill and dying people. This topic is becoming increasingly important, not only in society, but also for education. Absolutely. It is certainly exciting for the UMCH students to get to know all this. They might not be able to experience that elsewhere in this combination. That's right. We attach great importance to practice and to the recognition that the things learned in the pre-clinic, i.e. in physiology or biochemistry, have immediate implications for clinical care. The students shall immediately see the success of their actions. Practical training plays an important, if not central, role in anesthesia but it is also very important that you always know what you are doing and that the necessary connection to the basic subjects, i.e. physiology, biochemistry and pharmacology, is established. So one can acquire a lot of practical knowledge in your department. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Hofstetter. With pleasure. There's still a lot to discover here in Spire. Therefore, I suggest we continue to look around. Hello, Dr. Huber. Hello. There you are. Dr. Huber, you are a specialist in anesthesia here at the teaching hospital. This means that you work alongside students every day. How can one imagine the everyday life of UMCH students here? They are our young colleagues who accompany us every step of the way. In the beginning, they are more likely to play the role of observers, but as their length of stay increases, they become more and more active. This probably starts in the morning at the rounds or meetings? Exactly. We have an early meeting. At this meeting, all important aspects of the day are discussed. It is important that everyone, and therefore also the students, knows what to pay special attention to. Afterwards, they accompany their assigned partners to the respective surgical department. Also with the practical part, right? Exactly. Also with the practical part. In the beginning, the students carry out smaller activities, such as inserting a needle or even mask ventilation, which can be done quite well and learned quickly. Subsequently, those who are interested and would like to do so also carry out more difficult activities. The particularly eager students can then, for example, perform an intubation of the anesthetized patient or other forms of anesthesia. It all depends on the practical abilities of the respective students. Sure, of course, there are also breaks in the everyday life at the hospital. Yes, luckily. I know you were just on your way to your break. I would suggest that I join you and that we go visit the cafeteria. Sure, I'll show you the way.
Dr. Huber, while we are enjoying our coffee here in the cafeteria, please tell us something about the perks for UMCH students here at the hospital. Yes, we are already at the right spot for this topic. In the cafeteria, students can have their lunch free of charge. They can choose between different menus every day, so there is always something for everyone. That's a big advantage. The uniforms are also provided and washed daily, so that's not a problem and nobody has to worry about how to get them clean. We wouldn't be a good hospital if we didn't pay attention to the health of our staff. There is a great deal on offer in this respect. We have various cooperation partners, gyms, swimming pools, e-bike leasing, and sports group offers. There is something suitable for everyone that keeps them fit and balances mental activities. That's certainly a good thing. You need to get back to work, and I'm on my way to cardiology now. Dr. Schwacke, what exactly happens in cardiology? Also, the cardiology as a of inner medicine beschäftigt sich mit der, mit der, mit der Cardiology, as a special field of internal medicine, deals with cardiovascular diseases. Originally, it was only concerned with the heart and the vessels near the heart. But since all this is connected, it can be said that cardiology is the study of cardiovascular diseases. The cardiology specialist, i.e. the heart specialist, deals with the detection and treatment of cardiovascular diseases. The fact that so much has happened in the field of cardiology in recent years is partly due to the innovations that have taken place in recent decades. A lot of new methods have been established, not only drug treatment, but also technical methods. On the other hand, more and more patients are suffering from cardiovascular diseases. All these diseases, such as heart attacks and strokes, are on the increase because the average patient is also getting older. In cardiology, a rough distinction can be made between non-invasive cardiology which most people know as cardiac ultrasound, ultrasound of the arteries or EKG procedures, and invasive cardiology. The latter refers to the catheter technique. Here again, we distinguish between electrophysiology, which deals with the detection and treatment of cardiac arrhythmias, and coronary angiography, which improves blood circulation and is known to most through stent, balloon, etc. Which medical, but also communicative skills can be learned as a UMCH student in your department? Well, I'll explain it to you by looking at how a patient is treated in our hospital. It starts with the anamnesis. One first has to ask, what kind of complaints does the patient have? Afterwards, the physical examination is of course very important. Then the diagnosis and treatment of diagnoses and differential diagnoses, as well as participation in the decision-making process. Other important questions are, how do I treat the patient? Or, how do I write a doctor's letter? These are all factors that are important in this field. Then, of course, interaction with other doctors and other specialist departments. It is very important to us that one is involved in our team of nurses and doctors because we work on a team basis. These are the most important aspects. Of course, the students will also do tasks like placing small bronules to facilitate access to the veins. These are all things one learns. One also learns how to deal with patients, perhaps even difficult patients, in patient interaction. One should be aware of all this. Why should the UMCH students choose your teaching hospital of all places? Also, I think that Diakonissen Stiftungs Krankenhaus with over 400 Betten I think the Deaconess Foundation Hospital with over 400 beds is large enough to offer all modern therapy procedures, just like a university hospital. However, it is also small enough to provide individual care for students. We have many years of experience in training students and offer many courses, including courses with patient treatment. Ultimately, we have a well-trained team of doctors and nurses, which has been stable over the years. Thank you very much for this insight. Thank you. The Deaconess Foundation Hospital here in Spire is truly impressive and offers UMCH students plenty of opportunities to acquire practical knowledge. If you want to learn more about UMCH, about this teaching hospital, or about the application procedure, just visit our website or call one of our student advisors.